uh, we saw fresh spots just by when we started entering the river pit, mm. close to where it killed the, the court. So right now we're tracking um, a female lion with two cubs. If she spends a lot of time in the communal land, she's going to be killed as a problem animal. So the only way to save her is to track her, and if we see her using our vozellas and our local skills, we chase her back into the park. In conjunction with National Park Rangers, them armed with the rifles, armed, us armed with vovazellas, we go out and chase the lions. Since the long show started in 2012, we've recorded a 50% decline in conflict. But we want to try and see how effective it has been in changing people's attitudes towards lions. There's an issue of trying to develop these transfrontier conservation areas as marketable tourism products because that is very critical because we need to ensure that conservation contributes to the livelihoods and the economic development of the region. I see conservation and tourism as the two sides of the same coin. If we don't link the two, we generate income from, from, from the resources that we have, but we don't plow back to conservation, then there's a danger that we are going to deplete the same resource that is the basis for tourism industry. The local people they get employed in the local lodges. They've been employed as trekkers, they've been employed as waiters, and also sometimes the guides themselves. For example, myself, I'm not for, very far from here, but I have some sort of benefit because right now I'm a project manager, I live next to wildlife. That's one of the benefits that you get when you live next to wildlife.